morning friends, happy Tuesday. It is the 16th of April and today is the AZ Merit math test part one. So I have my little letter to my students on the board. We've got the desks all set up. After Easter break, which is this Friday, I'm planning to get the key to our storage unit here at school and I'm planning to bring my tables back into my classroom. I plan to keep about eight desks in my room in addition to my tables that I'm bringing in because I have three circular tables that I will be bringing back. And then I also have my two rectangle tables. I have that one back there and I have my one back there. I also have these three slash four black tables. But I'm going to try to use tables again next year, not specifically flexible seating. I plan to still assign students a seat, but I really like the idea of having tables instead of desks. I think that it promotes a little bit more organization, and I also do a lot of collaboration, so I really would like to just have my tables back, and I really don't like the look of the desks and how they don't match. It really drives me crazy. So. Friday, my nephew and I are going to be coming to school and getting my desks out of here and bringing my tables back in. And I should have enough seating for each student to have a seat at a table or a desk. And I won't have as many floor seats. So I'm planning on putting the legs back on the smaller tables that are on the ground and bringing them up so that my students can sit in a chair because I feel like when they were on the floor, like a lot of them would complain. So I also moved a lot of the stuff from up front so that I could have my kiddos sitting on the floor during instruction time again. And I really want to do that next year, but I want to get a rug. And I have one on my Amazon classroom wish list, which is linked down below. Um, so you can go check out the one that I'm planning to get. But I would like to do a rug next year so that that's like a specific spot. I know this, that I've used sit spots in the past and I like them, but I'm gonna try the rug route and see if that works for me. I don't know 100% yet if I'm really gonna do it. Um, I'm thinking about it. But the desks are set up right now in groups of two, and they're set up in a way that I had the space in the front of the room uh, without, so that I can kind of plot where my tables are gonna go. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do small round, small round, big round, and then I'm gonna do my two sets of desk tables. So I do plan on keeping about eight desks, but I'll probably turn them around so that the opening is blocked so the kids can't use the inside of the desk because I want them to clean out their stuff and just be like minimal for the end of the school year. I also put my teaching space over here because I felt like it was more out of the way um, and now when I sit at my table, I can have all the kids in front of me and I'm still able to teach in front of the smart board, but I have more space for kids this direction because I felt like before they were like all crammed in the front and yesterday it was nice. I was able to walk up front and I had plenty of space because I could get kids back here rather than being cut off at this line so it worked out pretty good so I'm testing this out for next year and I also really like the fact that I can stand on this side of the table and sit on this little stool and teach from there if I want to or I can sit on the other side so I kind of liked that feature too um, but yeah there goes my principal up the stairs do you see him oh he's gone <laughs> So anyway, that is what is going on up in here. We have testing again today, and then our last day is Thursday. So excited. My doormate just walked in, so I'm going to stop vlogging and go talk to her for a little bit, and then I'll see you guys later. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down real quick and just do the introvert teacher tag. And Janice Wan created this little tag thing and it's called the introvert teacher tag. And what she did was she took 18 questions from Buzzfeed about introverts and she answered the questions that pertain to her as a teacher. Now, before I begin this tag, I just wanna mention that I don't really consider myself an introvert or an extrovert. 
I feel like I'm somewhere in between. So I thought that this so I thought that these questions would be interesting to ask myself just to see if I am more of an introvert than an extrovert. I feel like a lot of the different, the two different um, personalities really shine and it just kind of depends on the situation that I'm in. So really quickly, I'm just going to answer these questions. Janice Wan is the first teacher tuber to do the introvert teacher tag. So if you guys want to go check out her channel, I will have it linked down below. And okay, I'm going to get into these questions real quick. So question one, do people call you antisocial all the time? No, absolutely not. They would, I would not really consider myself antisocial. Do they try to convince you to be more outgoing? I definitely don't think that I have any problem being outgoing unless I'm in a situation where I feel um, inferior, I guess. So I think that I would say that like in staff meetings, I'm not very outgoing. Like I don't usually raise my hand or want to talk or share out, but it's funny because I will talk and share out on YouTube to thousands of people and not to my own staff. I don't know why. <laughs> Do people ask if you are depressed or okay? Um, I guess sometimes people ask if I'm okay, just if I'm not like super bubbly and full of sunshine. So I feel like if I'm having an off day where I'm my more introverted self, then people wonder what's going on. Do people ask you what you're thinking about? No, not really. I guess I'm usually one to explain what I'm thinking. <laughs> Do you take breaks to recharge? Sometimes when it's my prep during recess, I have like a 15 minute afternoon recess. I will just sit in my room in the dark and just do nothing. Do you take breaks to recharge after spending time with someone? Hmm. I guess I would say that when, like when my husband goes to work, I really do enjoy those nights when I'm a little bit by myself. I guess when my husband goes to work, I really do enjoy the nights that I have when I'm by myself. Once I put the baby to bed, I just like do nothing. I sit, I watch Netflix, I take a hot bath, I enjoy a cup of tea, and I really enjoy having that time by myself. Also, after I have company for like the weekend, like my mom and dad will come for the weekend, I'll just like totally enjoy the quiet for a while. And where it's really hard to enjoy quiet when you have a toddler, any chance that I get, I will just sit in quiet and enjoy that time. Do you purposely ignore a call if you don't know who is calling because you'd rather not talk to a stranger? Absolutely. If you are an unknown number on my phone, I am not answering it. Do you hate when your hairdresser, manicurist, or strangers like to make small talk? I kind of do. It's like, I don't really know you, so I don't really want to talk about like anything with you. Um, I would rather just sit there and be quiet and just enjoy the silence. Do you stare at the ground so you can pretend you didn't see someone approaching? Um, I don't say I stare at the ground. I look everywhere else. So like if somebody's coming up this way, sometimes I'll look that way or I'll look at my phone. Um, and then when they get closer to me, then I'll like look up and give a smile, but I'm not like going to look at the ground. I don't know. I guess I just look away. Do you spend most of your time at a party slowly nursing your drink or eating snacks? Yeah. At parties, depending on which party I'm at, I don't really attend parties very often, um, or social events or gatherings unless it's like for family. Um... But if I do, it depends on who's there. If there's someone there that I haven't seen in forever, then I'll have a conversation. But I spend a lot of time at parties eating snacks. Like, I'm always by the snack table. And I don't think that's an introvert thing. I think that's a foodie thing. Yeah, if I don't know anybody at the party, I'm get. I'm going to be sitting on the couch by myself eating my food or like if it's something where my husband is like I'll just be kind of like trailing around behind him. Do people mistake your thinking face for a resting beep face <laughs> all the time? I'm told all the time that I have a resting beep face um, and I think it's because I don't really have a very big smile or a big mouth um, so when I'm just sitting quietly I kind of just
Do you not participate in events that would involve icebreakers? Um, technically no, because if I have to participate in the event, then I do. But when the time comes to actually talk, sometimes I just don't. Is introducing yourself fear inducing? I always get a little bit hot and like my heart beats really fast and I get a little bit sweaty when I'm put in a situation where I have to like introduce myself. But once I get comfortable, then I feel like I open up and let go and become a little bit more friendly. Do you like using the internet because you can show your personality without having to deal with people? <laughs> I don't think it's about having to deal with people. I think I just find myself a little bit more comfortable talking to a camera. Um, I do like to share with people in person, but I also feel like I have to be very selective with who I share with because if I overshare with someone who doesn't appreciate being shared with, then it feels very awkward and I feel a little bit like they're annoyed by me because I'm sharing. So I guess I feel like if I share on the internet, then whoever wants to hear it or wants to accept what I'm sharing will take it. And if you're not interested in hearing what I have to say, then you just won't click on my video. So I feel like it's a little bit easier for me to share online because the person is not in front of me reacting to what I'm giving them. Um, and I don't have to deal with people who are not interested, I guess. Is that weird to say that? Um, face to face, if they're not interested, I guess it's more like, like if I try to share with somebody like in person that I know who doesn't want to be shared with, it's harder to read them. Whereas I can just share with everyone online because they're gonna click if they wanna know. <laughs> Canceling plans. Guys, I am really bad at this. Like I'll make plans with someone and then the time will come and I'll just be like, you know, I'm a little tired. I don't feel good. I think I'm just gonna stay home. And I do that all of the time. I've been trying really hard lately in my life not to do that, but I have been a person that has done that a lot in my past. Trying to fix that, but I am a person that cancels plans. Not on purpose, not because I don't want to see that person, just because I'm like, I would rather be home. I'm such a homie. Does everyone try to fight you to be more social, but you're happy the way you are? I don't really think that people fight me to be more social. I think that it's just like, I would rather spend my time at home in quiet, just sitting around than going out and doing extravagant things. Like on weekends, I usually spend my time at home in my house or just like branching out a little bit here and there to places I know, like I'm not a social butterfly. I don't attend Christmas parties. I don't attend like, other holiday events. I don't attend a lot of friends barbecues. And maybe that's just because I don't have a lot of friends that are here in the moment. A lot of my friends are like out there, like Jen, she lives in Prescott. My best friend, Nicole, lives in South Carolina. Um, Mandy, she lives about an hour away. However, she'll be teaching with me next year, so I'll get to see her all the time. And I don't really feel like I have like a close, tribe of friends where like we all hold events and everyone goes to their each other's houses and like we have social stuff. I don't really feel that I have that right now. And that is something that I would really like to have because I feel like it's just more fun to have like a close group of friends where you do everything together. Like you celebrate holidays and everyone comes to kids' birthday parties and it's more like a I talk to you on a regular basis and I see you on a regular basis. Our next door neighbors are amazing. We see them all the time. We hang out with uh, them all the time. And so that's really nice. But I don't really feel like I'm a person that has to be in a social setting all the time. I really do enjoy being quiet and to myself and it works for me. So Anyway, that is the introvert teacher tag. If you're interested in participating in that, if you feel like you are an introvert or if you're maybe like on the fence of you don't really know which one you are or maybe you're like me and you're both an introvert and an extrovert depending on your situation, 
then go ahead and film the introvert teacher tag. I will put the questions down in the description box below. Don't forget to check out Janice's channel and her video, and um, I'm gonna get back to the vlog. Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. I feel like doing my Friday dance, like, it's Thursday, Thursday, gonna get down on Thursday. Yeah. So, I'm here at 7 0 10. 7 0 10, that's what time it is. Wow. You can tell that I've gotten a lot more sleep today, or sorry, last night, than I did the night before because I have so much more energy and I feel so much better. And I did get coffee this morning. And I'm gonna share with you what I get from Starbucks. I do not get anything super fancy from Starbucks because quite frankly, I don't know what to get. And sometimes when I try to get too crazy, I don't like what I got. So I just get a Trenta vanilla iced coffee with classic and cream. That's it. Um, and I like the classic and the vanilla because it makes it extra sweet. And I like it extra sweet. And then I got a spicy chorizo sandwich. Also, I wanted to share some details about my outfit this morning because I have tons of questions about them all the time. So I'm going to try to do that a little bit better, you know, than I usually do. So my headband that I'm wearing today is by Teaching Joys. She has an Etsy shop, and I love her headbands because they are $2 cheaper than Naughty's. And um, every time I try to buy a Naughty's headband, every time I go on the the Etsy shop, they're not open. Like they're out or they're on vacation or whatever. So I haven't been able to get my hands on them. But Shannon at Teaching Joys makes headbands too. She has different styles than Naughty's, but they're still super cute. And she's actually a local here in Arizona. And she has a little one-year-old boy and we've gotten together um, and had the boys kind of play, but we're planning on having a little bit more fun with that this summer. Um, now that her little one's walking. Oh, he's so cute. Oh my gosh, his smile just makes me, ah! Anyway, I'm moving on. Then my earrings are by Alan J Dreams, and they're on Etsy as well. They're also on Instagram, and I will link both of these Instagrams down below. I'll just put their handles. Um, I will put, so they're by Alan J Dreams, and I love these because they have like a pinky floral type pattern in there. I don't know what that pattern is, but I love it. And then the tassels are pink with blue. I love them. I thought they tied in really well with my kimono today, which I'm so sorry guys, but this kimono is from Target from like two years ago, so you probably can't get it. But it's long and flowy, and I picked it because I'm wearing my Lipstick and Littles May Your Strategies Be With You shirt again because today is the last math test and I thought well I need like my my Vader cape you know so I can flop around the room so this is from Target you probably can't get it at this point in time sorry and then I'm wearing some Lulu legging pants because I need to be comfortable today and then my shoes are from Target I love these. I get so many compliments on them, and I love how they make my legs look a little thin. My feet are huge. I wear a size 10, but I feel like they make my leg look thinner, so I wear them. I only wear them with pants, though. Like, if I try to wear them with shorts, my legs just look chubbier. I don't know. I don't understand. Also, my friend Becca, who's been observing in my class a couple of times, she's the girlfriend to my husband's best friend, and they work together. Um, anyway, she came in yesterday to do an observation and teach a small group lesson, because she's studying teaching, and she brought me a bunch of books. I'm so excited, look at this one. Mm -hmm. um, tons of Magic Tree House books, which I'm so excited about because my kids are a little bit lower readers and they're going to love these. And then um, a World Records book, two copies of Charlotte's Web. So now I have 20 books total. I had to check out two from the library. So I'm gonna add these two because my lovely teammate who's retiring gave me a class set of Charlotte's Web. So 
Good morning, Hannah! I'm vlogging! <laughs> So now I have a class set of Charlotte's Web and I probably will just keep these three copies just in case um, from the library, but now I have 20 books of my own. Technically I have 21 because I have my own personal copy that I keep super safe in my bookshelf. And even though I probably don't need to, but this is the color edition. That's why it's my special copy. It's the one that has the colored photos. So I keep this one safe in my own little bookshelf. <laughs> And nobody touches it. You don't touch Mrs. Valdez's Charlotte's Web copy. No, you don't. So, that's exciting. I gotta put those away. I think I'm gonna go through my library pretty soon and just toss some of the books that are a little bit too higher level for my kids and maybe donate them to Mandy since she'll be teaching fourth grade next year. Her kids might enjoy them. Um, and because I know that when she cleaned out her classroom, uh, she got rid of a lot of books, so I think I might just put them in that box and then donate them to her for next year. So, here's what I'm going to do. Yesterday, I got all prepped for Charlotte's Web. And um, I don't know if you guys watch Jennifer at Genuine Teaching. You probably do. She's my BFF. She and I are both doing Charlotte's Web to get, well, not together, but we're doing it at the same time and we're using the same resource. I'm looking around my room trying to find it. Where did I put it? Oh, it's over by the books. Wow. Wow. So I have it all printed and it's organized by section in here and it's just like separated by a sticky note. And then let me show you, it's by the book umbrella. The actual resource is by the book umbrella. Oh, here it is. The Book Umbrella, Charlotte's Web Novel Study. And the reason why I like this one better than, there's one on, te there's one on um, Super Teachers too, which is like, if you have a membership, then it's free. Um, that one is organized, well, it looks like this. This is the Super Teacher one. This one is broken up into four chapters each. And I just feel like three would be easier to do in a two day period. So we're gonna do three chapters every two days. So on day one, we will do vocabulary and then start reading. And then on day two, we'll finish reading and do the comprehension and understanding activities. And then my teammate also gave me this and it's by um, Smart Chick Teaching Resources. I don't know if this is on TPT, it probably is but it's a Charlotte's Web STEM engineering challenge pack and it has a ton of stuff in here like design a pig pen, um, design a spider web and it's like a plate thing. Um, there's a um, water bottle piggy bank in here. Um, super fun stuff. So I have those, oh yeah, piggy bank bottle challenge. Um, build a spider challenge. So I'm going to try to look through those and see if I can't like shove a couple of them in in the last like two weeks of reading Charlotte's Web because my plans have us reading up until the last Friday before the last week. So we'll have the whole last week of school to do like all the STEM challenges that go with it, to do all the like after reading stuff like character analysis, setting analysis, um, all the things that come after reading the book. And then we'll obviously watch the movie. So I'm thinking maybe we could reserve that for the last day of school since our last day of school is a full school day. It's gonna be a wild one. So I'm thinking like morning, watch the movie, afternoon, board games, done. So, I feel great um, about the end of the year. However, I feel like my room has exploded into a disaster zone. So I feel like I'm gonna come in on Friday, tomorrow, um, with my nephew, we're gonna move some furniture around, I think I already told you guys, but I'm also gonna try and clean today after the kids are done testing. So I'll have them work on like a work menu, which I have on the board right now. And I think I want to make a slide for it. Um, but I have just like a menu of things that the kids can work on. And since we have computers, if the kids are done with everything on my menu, they can play on a computer game or something like that because we do have the cart since we're testing. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to spend the afternoon cleaning, maybe have some kids work on some cleaning projects. I did have some kiddos organizing fraction tiles. And they have done a really nice job 
each of these has every single tile that they need. So for next year, I have these wonderful math uh, manipulative bags and each one of these contains like as much as each kid would need and I have like 35 of them. So I think what I wanna do is assign a couple kids towards the end of the year to um, take everything out of those and then just like recount and make sure everybody has the same amount because I'm thinking next year I'm going to assign each kid one of those, have them keep them in their cubbies and then when we're gonna use math manipulatives they just take out their manipulative bag and it's done. I don't have to pass anything out. I don't have to count anything. But if I know ahead of time how much stuff is in there, then I can plan around how much is in there. So I'm going to do that. And then I have these. <laughs> I should have kept up with it, but I have these bins right here full of curriculum. So like things that I purchased on TPT that I need to hole punch and put in my binders but I actually don't think that my binders are big enough for a lot of the files that I purchased. So I need to get a crate. I think I have one underneath one of these cabinets that's just holding clipboards. And I haven't really used clipboards all year because I use whiteboards as a clipboard, like they just flip it over and write on it. So I think I might get rid of those clipboards and put them up in the office and see if anybody needs them. And then use the crate and do like files and then store that somewhere because I would love to put all the smaller files in these binders so that I can just grab and go but like the big files like my lit studies and stuff I feel like I need just like a like a thing to put all the big things in maybe even two and I do have the extra tub so I might just do that anyways I am rambling and it is now 728 so that means I've been talking for like 12 minutes so I'm gonna go and get started on some of my projects and I'm gonna update my to-do list. I need to progress monitor today as well. So I think maybe uh, since I have my aid in here, um, maybe when the kids are done testing, if they're done before lunch, which they were last time about 20 minutes before lunch, maybe we'll have her progress monitor and then that's done and over with and I can just continue with my uh, to-do list. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go eat my breakfast and shut up. <laughs> Hey guys, so I am going to end this vlog here. Um, it is now 3, 3.12 and I definitely did a lot of work today when I didn't have students and my kiddos helped me a lot. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you everything that I changed and it's actually a lot and I'm really digging what's going on and there's a few things I still want to tweak and like change a bit but for the majority it's looking the way I want it. So, these are the desks that are going back to storage and being replaced by tables. I kept eight tables to create, or eight desks to create two tables. And what I did is I turned them around so that the openings are away so that kids can't like put stuff inside. It's literally just a table, except for this one would not turn and be level because I only kept tables that were level because all of these were like different colors, different levels, hated them. Now they look so nice and uniformed and I might even buy some black tablecloths to throw over them for like fun. So these are all going back into storage and I will be bringing my three round tables back. If there's four kids at each round table, that will be 12 seats plus four more is 16, 20 and I have 21 students. So I can have a kid sit there, I can have a kid sit here, I can have a kid sit there, I can have a kid sit here. So this is another thing that I moved. I brought my big tall black table from back there and I put it up here because this is my teaching station and I normally don't sit at it, I usually stand at it. So I thought I would just use this for my teaching place. And then this table I think I'm gonna give to Mandy next year because she's gonna be here at our school next year and her classroom that she's moving into doesn't have very many tables and since I don't need this one because I have those I'm going to save this and just keep it here for the rest of the year and then in August I'll take this into Mandy's room so that she has it. So this is what this looks like right now and I love this because I can have all my kids sit in the front here like I do normally I can have them all sit right here 
and then next year that will be gone. But then back here is gonna be all their tables for their work, for their collaboration. I can fit one, two, three round tables and I can fit everybody in here. And I do have the legs to one of my circle tables, so I'll only have one floor table. And then that one isn't even going to be used for assigned seats. That will just be like another flexible seating option. And I might even take two of them away and move them up front just for me to have a place to put stuff up there. This table here is going to go to Mandy as well because, again, she's coming to a classroom that doesn't really have a lot. This is a dry erase table. I've never really used it since I have my big dry erase boards. I just throw them down on top of the tables and they work just fine. Also, I'm keeping all my chairs because I do plan to have uh, the kids using chairs, not stools at my tables, except for the one table that will be on the ground. They will be using cushions. And then if I can get my paws on some legs, for those, for that circular table, I will because I really just, I know the kids don't really like sitting on the floor. And so for assigning seats, I'm just going to ask the kids who's comfortable on the floor all day. And if they are, great. If they're not, I could even have them assigned to this table. And then when it's small group time, have them move to the floor table. That might be even helpful because it's only an hour they'd have to sit on the floor. So, or they can sit on the bench or they can sit you know, on the Ottomans, um, we'll figure it out, but there will only be one floor table. So that's nice. I moved this long thing from over here. I wanted there to be more space in the front of the room for kids to sit, so this is gonna be my small group area. This will be Miss Jane's small group area. She's my aide. That table will get pushed up a little bit more, but for now, it's just gonna be pushed up there until I move this. And then, this I was planning on putting back there for next year, but I'm not sure. It was between leaving that there, which I might actually do now that I'm looking at it, and just move my black one over there and make that more of a my stuff thing because this is going to be my little desk area. It's super small because I don't really use it, but it's going to be my space. So I might move this here, and then I want to get two smaller short bookshelves to go here to make a small library because I really don't feel like my library gets used that much. Like all of the books that are there, I'm planning on donating a lot of them to Mandy because they're higher level. My kid, like the books that my kids never touched, like I don't need to keep them if they're not using them. So I wanted to get two shorter ones to put over there for next year. So a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to do and accomplish right now is moving towards what I want to do next year and I'm trying to get ahead so that I don't have to do it when I come back in August. So a lot of the furniture moves, I did it now because I have the time. I love where this ended up. It's centered on the wall, it's perfect. I don't have to take this paper down this summer so I've just figured I would leave it there. And I love where it turned up and then this paper I love how this fits right here, so it's kind of like perfect the way I moved it all. I was going to get a horseshoe table, but I don't know if I want to because I love how this table doesn't take up that much space, and if I need more space, I can just push it up against the wall, and it's an extra counter space that I can use, and then I just pull it out and use it. So I kind of like the fact that I don't have that. <laughs> However, now this is not centered. So I don't know, you guys comment down below, do you like the way this wall looks or should I move this over so that it's centered on the wall? I don't know, you guys tell me. And then I put this one over here, I need to paint this, but this will be like where I keep all my small group materials. And then I wanna get some supplies Things You know the ones from Ikea with the little drawers? I want to get those and put them up here for next year so that all the stuff the kids use and touch will go in those. And then I really want to get a stage, you guys. Like Misfits, the one with the storage, 
underneath. I'm really gonna see if my dad can build me one because I feel like it would just be the cherry on top of my classroom. <laughs> So since that will be gone, I think that there will be plenty of space for it because then I can have kids sitting back here and it will be perfectly fine. But I think that this will be great. I think that I really like the space it gives me and I love the idea of having my tables back. Really love the idea of having my tables back. And I just think that it's gonna be way more fun with all the projects we're working on at the end of the year and all the stuff. Also, I had my kids clean out their desks, obviously, and they put all their things in their cubbies. So their cubbies look a little bit messier now, but that's fine, that's what the cubbies are for. So the mess is over there and not out here. Okay guys, I've been rambling on too long, so I'm gonna let you go. But thank you guys so, so much for watching this week. I will see you next week. And I um, hope you guys have a fabulous Easter, and I will see you next week.